<laughs> so that's my class to predict the range of a projectile based upon the height that a ramp is, a ski jump is above a surface. So I'm going to call this one H1. And I've given them a variable, I've asked them to investigate a variable, uh, how high up the ramp they're going to launch their ball from. So this is H2. And actually they could change either of these and this prediction would work. Basically the ball starts from height H2, comes off the ramp and follows a parabolic path and lands a distance x, the x dimension, from the start of the ramp there. Now this applies some really interesting physics, not only the physics of projectiles, but what we've done earlier on in our GCSE course, which is the conversion of gravitational potential, mgh, into kinetic energy. So the first thing to do is to get an expression for gravitational potential, an expression for kinetic, simplify and rearrange so that we've got the v, the velocity, there. So you can see hopefully the m's cancel, and then I can rearrange times by 2, 2 gh equals v squared, so v is root of 2 gh. That's my expression for the velocity here, and bearing in mind this, so I don't get confused later, is h2. So it's just a different uh, number to h1 in there. So once I've got my expression for velocity, the next thing I need is an expression for this distance here. Well, this distance here is going to be speed times time. So, hmm, how can I work out the time this projectile is going to be in the air for? Well, earlier on in the course we talked about, well, if, if we know the height, we know the time that that projectile is going to be in the air. Uh, because we, we know something else. We know the acceleration is g, which is 10 meters per second squared. So we know that of all times. So if we know height, we can work out the time that that, that projectile is going to be in the air for. So in this case, I know acceleration, I know a displacement, and I, I, don't, I do know an initial velocity in the vertical direct, uh, dimension, which is zero. So I'll do that uy is 0. Um, so I can use s is ut plus a half at squared to work out the time because this is 0 and this is h1 so let's just make those changes and this is g so rearrange that for time so 2h1 divided by g is t squared So t is the root of 2h over g. Now I've got my expression for speed in the horizontal direction, my expression for time, and whenever we're dealing with projectiles, we always talk about the no air resistance, so there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction. So I've got my expression for x here. I can just sub in v root 2gh2. Uh, and sub in my expression for time, root 2h1 over g. Okay, and well, actually, I've got some knowns, and I've got some things that I can simplify, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I think the simplest way is just to square everything. Certainly the simplest way to think about it. So x squared is 2gh2 times 2h1 over g. So now my g's cancel. 2 times 2 is 4, so I get x squared is 4 h1 h2. So x then is the root of all that. So I can use this, this little expression here, a very simple little expression for x, to predict how far the projectile will go. So once we've actually done this practical, either taken a range of different heights up the ramp or actually change this a range of different heights of the ski jump we can therefore collect our data for x compare it to our predicted data and we'll be able to get a real quantitative 
analysis or quantitative evaluation of the ski jump practical there. Hope that was useful. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you for watching Gorilla Physics. Please do like, share and subscribe. That really helps me be more useful to more people. Also, please go ahead and check out Gorilla Chemistry and Gorilla Biology. You can expect the same sorts of things, past paper questions and videos to help you understand topics. Thanks once again for watching.